Yeah, you know, Aaron, I would talk, but I'm in my dad's office right now. I'm sleeping in the same bed I grew up in. Hey. I'm 25 years old, and I'm happy as hell doing it. And I'm proud to say that. Hey, Are you in the same bedroom? Same bedroom you grew up in? Same bedroom. All right, our next guest is Packers running back Aaron Jones. So, Aaron, what was happening in your world when life as we knew it stopped? Uh, life as we knew it, when it stopped, I was just uh, back at home in El Paso, where I am now, uh, training, uh, living life every day, normally, uh, how I normally do in the off season, And uh, it hasn't changed too much for me because uh, this what I usually do is train and um, relax with family. Only thing is the gym was kind of taken away from me, so my dad kind of uh, made a gym in the garage for me and my brother. So I appreciate him for that and still able to get it in. What kind of a gym are we talking about? Is this just throwing you back to high school stuff? What kind of weights did he put oh, out there definitely. for Definitely. That, that's exactly what I told him. I said, I feel like we're back in middle school getting a uh, little league workout saying uh, he bought a bench. Uh, we get, we had got, uh, he got some dumbbells. We had already had some ladders. We had already had some equipment, um, some kettlebells. Um, what else? Um, some more footballs. I just got a jugs machine. Um, work on the hands. So. Um, a little bit of everything, some reaction balls. So got a nice little setup in the garage. And we're, we're entering this period now where you just it's basically flip the napkin over. Anybody's idea is worth something. I mean, how, how should the NFL play this thing moving forward? Uh, I mean, I have no clue. I, I mean, I would definitely take safety precautions. Um, but uh, at some point, I have to figure there's going to be a season, uh, whether it's now or – later on down the line uh, this year. But uh, I think s safety is definitely first. Uh, health health is, should be everybody's concern. It, would you feel comfortable playing in a football game right now? Uh, definitely. I, I miss football. I'm ready to get out there, honestly. <laughs> that's, that's the Aaron Jones that I know. I, I, miss, I miss being out there with the guys. What, what do you miss most? Uh, just, be, just being out there with the guys, hanging out with them, and uh, – just making plays on the field, uh, getting the crowd energized, really, that's the best part of it. What, what percentage, like, if you think, if you polled, you know these guys. I know you're, you're with Steinberg, Mahomes. You have all the same agent as all those guys. Yes, sir. What percentage of the league do you feel like would be feel comfortable playing football games with all that's happening around the world? Uh, I, feel, I, feel like a, I feel like a lot of the league would uh, – a lot of the guys are itching to get back. I know you see a lot of the guys in their workout videos and – um they're all looking good and hungry and ready to get back out there and um it's just part of us and we're all competitors and uh whenever they say go I feel like everybody's gonna be ready to go and um hungry and you guys are having these these zoom meetings right now like what kind of a zoom meeting is happening and now that we're in May yeah so we're actually holding our OTAs uh through zoom um so we'll have like running back meetings, special teams meetings, and also team meetings through Zoom. And it's pretty cool. The coaches uh, will pull up their uh, – you'll see their their main screen. That's the only screen you can see. And you see video footage and everything um, going through the plays, the breakdowns. And just like you being a, in a film, a film room. And um, it's pretty cool because um, you're at home and everybody has virtual backgrounds. That's the pretty cool thing about it. So you got, you got to show us your virtual background. Can you bring it up? Yes, I can bring it up. I got – I actually have two, so this is one of them. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, let's, let's see number two. This is the second one. That one was cutting out my head. This is the second one right here. So who's got – who has the best virtual background on the team? Uh, I do. My logo is the best one. <laughs> this one right here you see. Where? Yeah, right there. Explain to me what's going on. What's that logo back there? What's the thought process putting that together? Uh, so it's my initials, AJ, and then the three wings on the left and the three wings on the right represent 33. So AJ 33. And what, what's the significance of the number 33 for you, Aaron? Uh, actually, my family helped me pick that number uh, during the draft. Uh, I, uh, when I was drafted, the Packers um, gave me an option of different numbers. It was like 22. Um, 30, 32, 33, 34, 40, 41, 44. And uh, my parents right there and my brother, sister, everybody right there um, on the phone with me 
and I asked them whenever I should be, and they said 33, and I think it's very fitting, and uh, it, it's definitely grown on me. And, Aaron, as you continue to build your own legacy, you welcome a baby boy into the world. So, first of all, congratulations. And second of all, these are crazy times to have your first child. I mean, what was that process like with everything going on around the world? Uh, definitely. Um, it's definitely been a blessing. Um, definitely crazy times uh, during this time. So, it's a blessing that he's healthy, uh, strong. Um, he uh, – it was definitely crazy at the hospital. It could only be one person in there with, with – uh, the person who was having the baby, which was my girlfriend. And um, so I was only in there and we got to experience it together, uh, holding two phones on FaceTime while holding her hand. So my mom was there uh, and her mom was there as well. And so it was definitely a cool, neat experience, kind of, hey, you're off on your own now. Um, no parents are gonna hold your hand and it's just you two. So it, it, I think it was an amazing experience and everybody uh, treated us well at the whole um, now my, my baby boy is home three weeks and he's big and uh, healthy and sleeping all the time. And your parents, I mean, what, what is it, 56 combined years of military experience? I mean, it's something, it's tough to even wrap my head around, 56 combined years of military experience. What kind of a childhood did that, that create for you? Uh, very diverse um, childhood, but also like it was very neat. Um, diverse culturally and like on football field as well as well um just got to uh experience playing football in tennessee uh when that's where i first started playing football and then uh virginia a little bit in little league and then i moved to texas so um i, I feel like there's some some really good football really uh some really good players are coming coming out of the seven pop seven in virginia and then um texas you know texas football so i've, I've got to experience uh, a little bit of that and then just uh growing up culturally wise uh getting to experience different things and um, now here in El Paso is predominantly Hispanic and um, mm -hmm. the culture has definitely grown on me you see me more a sombrero before the game and um, I, I love I love people here the people who love me I love them so anybody who supports me um, I love them and um, the people in El Paso support me and so but I'm going to continue to love them so thank you wait so now that you're a Green Bay Packer you're so you spend your off seasons still in El Paso Texas Yes, sir, I do. So uh, during the season, I'm in Green Bay. And uh, once we're done, right back here in El Paso training. Interesting. So why, why El Paso? What made you say that, you know, with all the money you've made, with all the fame you have now accumulated, why continue to go back to El Paso? Um, well, actually, I, I still live here with my parents. Um, they still live here. And uh, so they moved here when we were in seventh grade. And uh, me and my brother stayed here for college. And um, so they, they still have a house here. They still live here. And uh, so we come, we come back in the off season and just chill here at my parents' house and save, save our money um, and live with them and just spend as much time as we can with them. And just like being uh, little kids again, because, I mean, you're away for so long uh, during the season. And uh, they, they get to see you during the games here and there or on the, on the road. I mean, they're at every game, but on the road, I mean, you know, you only get 30 minutes after the game or two, three hours at a hotel. So um, it's pretty neat to be back at home. And that's what uh, warrants my heart as family. So. Yeah, you know, Aaron, I would talk, but I'm in my dad's office right now. I'm sleeping in the same bed I grew up in. Hey, I'm 25 hey, years hey. old, and I'm happy as hell doing it. And I'm proud to say that. Hey, you in the same bedroom? Same bedroom you grew up in? Same bedroom. There's nothing like home, is there? It, there's, it's nothing like home. And, uh, I mean, you can't beat it. Quarantine at home, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. It takes you back to high school almost is what it feels like. It so definitely I'm, I'm does. I mean. Go in ahead. The, in the garage. It definitely does in the garage with dad. Uh, you come right in. You have, a, you have a meal. You have a, a shake ready from mom. And then you just re relax. And then you go get another session. And dad's right there watching, coaching, trying to help you hop in the drills and different things. So it's pretty cool. It is. It is. So how about with your parents? And, and I was reading, you just mentioned, too, that they're able to make it to every game, not just home games, home and away games. First of all, how are they able to do that? And how much does it mean to you to be able to look up in the stands and go, there's mom and dad? Oh, uh, well, they just uh, save their money really well. They, they made it a dedication that they would never miss a game or yeah, they just made it a mission. They'll go on a, online like now and start booking early and looking at flights now that the schedules came out and um, where they're going to stay and 
uh, we're, uh, so kind of just planning ahead and getting it getting it done early at a cheaper price. And um, it's just the love they have for me. And um, they told me they'd always be there. And so I know I can always look up in the stands and know I can find them and uh, have them there with me. So that's that's big to me. And I love them for that. Well, we can't let all that saved money go to waste. We got to get back to football. So have you gotten any indication of when we may be able to open up these team facilities and start the process of an on-time season? I haven't gotten any indications. Uh, we just been told that our off season's online right now and uh, that they were going to meet and, uh, in sometime in May and let us know. That's, that's the answer I was afraid you were going to give me. I'm, I'm curious. So the NFL, like this is what's been tossed around lately. And it's um, who the heck is that guy? The dude that was at the, with the ESPN and left now is with some gambling network neither here nor there. But he, he tweeted this whole thing about if and, you know, NFL players are going to have to sign contracts acknowledging the dangers that are going to be existing playing football with coronavirus. Are you going to sign something like that if it means being able to go play? Uh, I think I am. I mean, I think I'm healthy enough. My immune system's healthy enough to uh, – fight it off but um i'm honestly scared of the corona test i've seen the videos where they put that thing in your nose that's the only thing i don't want to do but uh yeah i'm i'm think i can take care of myself uh well enough to prevent myself from catching corona and um with still being able to play football how about with your family involved like would would you feel comfortable playing in a game and then going back home especially with a young kid now that you have your young son at home uh I would because I mean how like the the fans are in the stadium but you know they're not they're close to us but they're not that close I feel like so you know it's still I feel like it's still ways to kind of isolate you be isolated you know mm -hmm. you don't have yeah. to touch any you don't have to touch any fan if you don't want to in, in yeah. reality, you know, but a lot of players like the the fan engagement, and we go shake the, the fans' hands and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there, there's also a possibility that there's no fans. I mean, can you imagine so, going out to Lambeau Field that's empty? So if there's no fans, uh, Lambeau's historic, and we still have a home field advantage. So um, I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, just back like you're in little league back at practice and trying to show out in front of your parents and hopefully your family can come um they would allow them to come and so you just didn't and like like i said back in little league show, trying to show out in front of your parents and family and uh you know the television and stuff is on but that's and you're playing for your brothers uh next to you and uh i think it's a little bit it has a little bit more to it when it's just you guys there Mm -hmm. And Aaron, I mean, on the field, you tied only Christian McCaffrey for the most combined touchdowns in football. I know my answer to this question. I want to know yours. Do you feel like you get enough credit for what you did last year? Uh, no, sir, I definitely don't. Um, but I'm used to it. Um, I called it last year. I said uh, I was in, wanted to lead the league in touchdowns and, um, when I was on the Rich Eisen show and happened so uh this that was one of my goals and uh, i didn't reach all my goals but look to reach them this year and keep working towards them and you're getting ready for a contract year too so it's the right time to have you over a thousand yards the most rushing touchdowns in football season ago most combined huh? touchdowns like i just mentioned uh tying oh, mccaffrey yeah. why do you think it's become so hard for running backs that position in particular to get paid fairly um I really don't know. Uh, it's kind of baffling to me because uh, you, you look at a, the running back position and you see all that they do on the field. Um, they do just – they the only person who does more than them is a quarterback. Um, I mean, they have they have to know their protection. They have to be able to block. They, they block just like an offensive lineman. They know their protection, so they're in the protection meetings. Um, we have to know, know the run game as well, so we're running the ball as well. Uh, we have to know the pass game because – they're using us as weapons in the pass game as receivers. So we're in the receivers meetings as well, like with, with the tight ends and stuff as well. So mm -hmm. I feel like a back brings everything to the game that they can be versatile. And so you, you, you bring all of that to a back and it's kind of baffling because you could, the backs can do multiple things and they're, they've shown that how much they can help a team.
I'm in agreement with you. You're coming off a career year. You have Aaron Rodgers playing quarterback, and we draft a first-round quarterback, and then we draft a second-round running back and A.J. Dillon, and I go, what the hell? So, so how did that sit with you, and then how do you try to move past that? Uh, I just – I mean, I moved past it. I mean, every year uh, I know it's a business in there bringing in guys to try to replace guys and get better and bring in competition to raise the level of competition as well. And uh, I just go about my business as usual, worry about myself and continue to push myself. Uh, and, I mean, I'm going to help everybody who comes in uh, to learn the offense and everything so they can they can help us. But uh, I'm just worried about myself and uh, ready to have a great year and um, build off of last year, really. If you want my spot, play me for it, man. That's the, the beautiful thing is you get to t- take that mentality when, once we do get back to football. So we call this lockdown lightning round right now. So it's just three quick questions, and we'll get you the hell on with your dad. First okay. question is, you and your brother, your brother, of course, spent some time in the league with the Ravens. Uh, and I heard whenever you two would get into it growing up, your parents would put you both in love therapy. Love <laughs> therapy. What's that look like? Okay, love therapy looks like uh, us holding hands no matter uh, it, they stopped. I think the last time we did it when we were 17, but like no matter where you're at, holding hands. Uh, so we, we were like, I think the most embarrassing time we were like 15, holding hands in the mall. Like we were going at it and we just hold, my mom like looked at us and she started, she pinched us and was like love therapy. And we like were literally 15 in high school, holding hands in the mall, like walking past people we know. And it's, it was just like so embarrassing. My mom would like walk in front of us and we like, kind of like try to let go or hold, it, hold each other's wrist. <laughs> so that's love therapy. Were, were your parents strict then growing up with, with their military roots? Uh, yes. And then when we were, when we were younger, uh, like four or five, like love therapy, we had to hug each other. They made us just hug each other. <laughs> I, I got to say, Aaron, I think I might take that on the day that I become a father. You beat me there. Uh, right. But on the, that, that sounds like a hell of a way to make your kids get along, doesn't it? So imagine beating your brother in a basketball game and then he has to hug you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like your parents. I've never even met them. How about, how, how about when was the first time it hit you? you? What was the first time you went, wait a minute, this is a little surreal, that Aaron Rodgers was going to be your quarterback? Uh, right after I got off the phone uh, from being drafted, I'm like, wait, Aaron Rodgers is my quarterback. Like, that's so cool. And, like, you know – Going in, he's already a, a future Hall of Famer, and being able to work with that guy and learn from him uh, is just going to elevate your game. And um, so he's taught me so much so um, in so little time, and I'll just look to learn so much more from him. What's he like as a teammate, man? Uh, he's a great teammate. Uh, I mean, he, he makes sure everybody everybody's entertained during the meeting. He's he's really – he's A-Rod is really fun, so people don't know. Uh, he's – Low key a comedian, but um no he he's a great teammate. Uh, my first my first time there, uh, he bought everybody on the team a pair of shoes, um, a pair of Adidas, and I'm like, well, like how did this dude even know my size? And not, knowing now, he probably went to the equipment people, but still, uh, for him to get us a pair of shoes and he even got my brother a pair of shoes. So, I mean, uh, that's that's special. Yeah, no doubt. How about how about the story of your first Lambo leap? Oh, uh, yes. My first Lambo leap was against uh, the Chicago Bears. Um, I th- was it Sunday Night Football? I think it was. Um, Is that, that doesn't sound like a bad time to have your first Lambo leap. It doesn't. Uh, I came in the second quarter uh, and on the goal line. Uh, I think it was like a – it might have been a power play or a duo play and got it and ended up diving in. And uh, my teammates had already told me, if you score, you got to do it. You got to do it. So – Went up there and leaped and made sure I got a nice, clean picture to put up in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Aaron, we appreciate the time, man. You are nothing but class. And best of luck this upcoming season. I hope we get to see you right on time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you for having me. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.